Hello friends! In this video, let's talk about retrofitting. So the main points of this discussion are the definition of retrofitting, objectives of retrofitting, main reasons why we need to retrofit structures, flow of retrofitting process, and of course, the materials and techniques used in retrofitting structures made of concrete, steel, and timber. What is retrofitting? Retrofitting is a collection of mitigation techniques for earthquake engineering. The retrofit process is a general term that may consist of a variety of treatments including preservation, restoration, rehabilitation, and reconstruction. Earthquake creates great devastation in terms of life, money, and failures of structures. Upgrading of certain building systems to make them more resistant to seismic activity is really of more importance. Retrofitting proves to be a better economic consideration and immediate shelter to problems rather than replacement of building. Seismic retrofitting is a suitable technology for protection of a variety of structures. It has matured in the recent years to a highly reliable technology. But the expertise needed is not available in the basic level. The main challenge is to achieve a desired performance level at a minimum cost which can be achieved through a detailed nonlinear analysis. Optimization techniques are needed to know the most efficient retrofit for a particular structure. Proper design codes are needed to be published as code of practice for professionals related to this field. Why it is needed to retrofit structures? As time goes by, structures start to experience damages and deformations. Those damages are a result of increase in applied loads, unsafe design, corroded and insufficient reinforcements, cracks in concrete, and settlement in the foundation. Retrofitting is needed to maintain the serviceability, safety, and restorability of the structures. Retrofitting aims to ensure safety and security of a building, structure functionality, and machinery. It also aims to reduce hazard and losses to the non-structural elements and to increase lateral strength and ductility of a building after an earthquake. What is the flow of retrofitting process? This is the flow of retrofitting process. Identification, inspection, Evaluation before retrofitting, design and selection of retrofitting method, and last, evaluation after retrofitting. Before I discuss different retrofitting methods, let's conduct an assessment. This is my grandparents' house. I will inspect the house in order to find parts that will need retrofitting. But before that, Let's have a short interview with Lolo Nelson about the history of this house. Lolo, ilang taon na pong nakatayo ang bahay na ito? Ito ba, mga 30 taon na ito, naka, nakatayo. Mm -hmm. Ginawa po ba ito ng engineer o mason lamang? Mason lamang, kung nga nakatayo, nagtayo nga. <laughs> May nasira na po bang parte ng bahay dahil sa lindol at bagyo? Wala pa naman. Wala pa naman nabuho dito. So, kahit mga karak lang, marami na nagdaang bagyo ang nagdaan dito, lindo, pero wala pa. So, that's all for the interview with my Lolo. Let's proceed to the inspection of the house. But hey friends, there is someone who will help us to find the damaged parts. Guess who? She is the most adventurous, most energetic, and the cutest explorer in the whole wide world. She is none other than... Dora the Explorer! Hola! I asked Dora to help me find the damaged parts of the house. She has the map that will be the key to find the damaged parts. Oh man! Swiper is here! Oh no! She stole the map! What will Dora do? Swiper no swiping! Swiper no swiping! Dora asks Swiper if she can get the map with the exchange of her stuffed toy. And Swiper said yes. 
Dora and Swiper are now friends. And they will be together to search for the damaged parts of the house. There's a damaged and depleted wall. Tilted column. And cracked beams. Dora and Swiper accomplish their mission. With the help of Dora and Swiper, I found the damaged parts of my Lola's house that will need retrofitting. We found out that there are deteriorated walls, weak concrete covers, and corroded reinforcement bars. These are the actual photos of the damaged parts of the house. Cracks is one of the common deterioration observed in this structure. Cracks in concrete may accelerate the corrosion of the embedded reinforcing steel and may reduce the service life and increase the maintenance cost of the building. There are cracks on beams and walls. Likewise, it can be seen in these photos that corrosion of reinforcement has already started and there are damaged and deteriorated portions of existing concrete covers. In order for me to establish a concrete solution to those problems, let's first discuss the different methods in retrofitting structures made of concrete, steel, and timber. What are the methods used in retrofitting concrete structures? Retrofitting techniques for concrete structures are can be divided into two, the conventional techniques and the advanced strengthening techniques. Conventional techniques includes section enlargement, external plate banding, external post tensioning, ferro cement covering and grouting, while the advanced strengthening techniques includes the FRP or the Fiber Reinforced Polymer Composites Wrapping. Section Enlargement or RCC Jacketing In this method, the entire cross-section of the member will increase. Additional structural reinforcement steel with shear stirrups will be installed. This process involves surface preparation, additional reinforcement, and concrete curing. With the use of this method, there will be enhanced strength and increased shear capacity of column. The first step in reinforced concrete jacketing is to reduce or eliminate loads carried by column by putting mechanical jacks and other props between floors. Next, remove concrete cover and clean steel bars using wire brush or sand compressor. Coat the steel bars with an epoxy material that would prevent corrosion and install steel connectors and fill the holes with appropriate epoxy material. Install the steel bars and coat it with epoxy to guarantee the band between the new and old concrete. External Plate Banding In external plate banding, Steel plates are attached to the surface of the damaged member. Plates will be attached using adhesives with connecting mechanisms and bolts. This method will reduce stress due to external steel plates, enhance load-bearing capacity, and decreases the chances of cracks and deflection. But dead weight in the structure will increase using this method. External Post Tensioning in external post tensioning, high strength steel strands or pre-stressing tendons are used. Tendons are connected and pulled to anchor points on the members. This method reduces deflection, produces crack free members, increase the load bearing capacity, and help the structure to have the ability to restress distress and exchange an external pre-stressing cable, but this method is much expensive than any other method. Ferro Cement Covering This type of covering is a composite material reinforced with wire mesh and cement mortar modified with chemicals or polymers with closely spaced layer. This process involves surface preparation, orientation of wire mesh, 
and ferro-concrete finishing. Ferro-cement covering will enhance the resistance to cracking, capacity to carry heavy loads, flexural stiffness, resistance to penetration of water, and provide resistance to fire, corrosion, and earthquake. But binding rod and mesh are very time-consuming and the proper curing of concrete is required. Grouting Grouting is the easiest process which involves placing cementitious material in the cracks created from excessive loading in concrete member. This method will prevent reinforcement from corroding. Fiber Reinforced Polymer Wrapping This composite material is a polymer reinforced with fiber. This fiber reinforcement will carry the loads along the length of the fiber and will provide strength and stiffness. The flat layer contains an arrangement of unidirectional fiber fabrics embedded within a thin layer of light polymer matrix material. The fibers that are usually used are resins made of epoxy or polyesters and reinforcement fibers made of carbon and glass. Compared to other methods, FRP has corrosion resistance, high cost, ease of installation, less maintenance, and lightweight. Carbon Fiber Reinforced Polymer Wrapping Carbon constitutes the fiber phase of this composite material. This is a high-performance polymer and it contains 93-95% to carbon. Each fiber is 5 to 10 microns in diameter and this is twice as stiff as steel and 5 times as strong as steel. This polymer is high in tensile strength, lightweight, very low thermal conductivity, fire resistant, corrosion resistant, and non-magnetic. CFRP wraps are mainly used for corrosion control and retrofitting of RCC members. In circular column, it will increase the actual capacity, load-bearing strength, and compressive strength of the concrete. Those are the common retrofitting methods used for concrete structures. Moreover, there is another way of categorizing the methods used in retrofitting structures made of reinforced concrete, and this is by local and global techniques. Global techniques include adding shear wall, adding infill wall, adding bracing, adding wing wall, wall thickening, mass reduction, base isolation, and mass dampers. While local techniques include jacketing of beams, jacketing of column, jacketing of beam column joints, and straightening of individual footings. Adding shear wall. This method is used for non ductile reinforced concrete frame buildings. The added elements can be cast in place or pre cast elements. New elements will be placed at the exterior of the building, however, it may cause in the appearance of the structure. This process will increase the lateral strength, ductility, and stiffness of the building. Adding infill wall. Masonry infills contribute significant lateral stiffness, strength, overall ductility, and energy dissipation capacity. The structural load transfer mechanism is changed from frame action to predominant thrust action. The frame columns now experience increased actual forces but with reduced bending moments and shear forces. Adding steel bracings. This is an effective solution when large openings are required. Using this method, there will be higher strength and stiffness, opening for natural light, less amount of work since foundation cost may be minimized, and it adds less weight to the existing structures. Adding wing wall. The wing walls are placed on the exterior side of the existing frame. 
wing wall is added to increase lateral strength and stiffness of the structure. Wall thickening This method will increase the thickness of the wall by adding bricks, concrete, and steel reinforcement. It can carry more vertical and horizontal loads and it doesn't cause sudden failure of the wall. Mass Reduction Mass reduction may be achieved, for instance, by removing one or more story of a multi-story structure. In this case, it is evident that the removal of the mass will lead to a decrease in the period, which will lead to an increase in the required strength. Base Isolation Base isolation is the isolation of superstructure from the foundation. It is the most powerful tool for passive structural vibration control technique. This process isolates building from the ground motion that results in lesser seismic loads, hence lesser damage to the structure and minimal repair of superstructure. Using this method, building can remain serviceable throughout construction and it doesn't need major intrusion of existing superstructure. But base isolation is highly expensive and it can't be applied partially to structures unlike other retrofitting methods and it's challenging to implement in an efficient manner. Seismic dumpers Seismic dumpers are used in place of structural elements like diagonal braces for controlling damage in the building. It partly absorbs the seismic energy and reduces the motion of the building. Now that we're done on the retrofitting methods for concrete structures, let's move on to the retrofitting methods for timber and wood structures. The most common cause of failure in timber structures are related to weakness or lack of strength design, wood decay, and microclimate facilities attacked by microorganisms. To restore the function of timber in the structures, retrofitting methods that will increase the load and displacement carrying capacity, ductility, and energy dissipation capacity may be applied. The common methods in retrofitting timber structures are elastic plastic dumpers on diagonal braces, reinforcement of timber connections with steel plates, application of reinforced rendering, fiber reinforced polymer wrapping, material integration with wood prosthetics, and glued-in steel connections used for timber-based composite structures. Now that we're done on wood structures, let's proceed to the retrofitting methods used for steel structures. Steel structures commonly experience damages due to insufficient beam column connection, relaxed bolted connection, column base and truss corrosion, and deformations of steel elements. Some of the techniques in retrofitting damaged steel members are by addition of vertical and cross bracings, replacement of distorted members, and over stiffening of the node of the roof truss. Now we're done on the discussion of the retrofitting methods for concrete, steel, and timber structures. Selection of the appropriate retrofitting method is not a random process. There are many factors that will influence the selection of the appropriate method to be used. These are the cost of construction and maintenance, environmental aspects, clearance issues, magnitude of strength to be enhanced, time constraints, existing concrete strength, seismic effect consideration, and accessibility to work areas. So now that we already know some of the retrofitting methods for concrete structures, I will present my suggestions on how to repair or restore the damaged parts of my Lola's house. For cracks and deterioration of walls, the proposed solution are grouting and wall thickening. For weak concrete covers, patching new concrete covers and section repair by removing deteriorated concrete may be applied. 
For corrosion of reinforcements, the proposed solution is the application of rust removers or preventers before grouting and coating of polymer or polymer modified mortars. Lastly, for cracks on beams and leaning or slanted column, steel jacketing and reinforced concrete jacketing may be applied. So friends, this will end my discussion about retrofitting and its methods. I hope you learned something and don't forget to support Team Payaman by subscribing on their YouTube channel. And thank you for watching my video. Bye-bye! I power! <laughs> つまりは好奇心にとらわれてたんだ大切なものなら壊したんだ明かりの友らない